Hello, this is Mr. Field, and this is my video on rates of chemical reactions. Um, now, before you watch this, make sure you're comfortable with the basics of chemistry, so check out that video earlier in the playlist if you need to. Now, in this video, we're going to be talking about what rates of reaction are, and collision theory, which is what determines the rates of chemical reactions. And as we do that, we'll be looking at the effects of concentration, surface area, pressure, temperature, and catalysts on the rate of chemical reactions. So, let's start by looking at what we mean by the rate of a chemical reaction. Now, the rate of a chemical reaction is the amount of product formed every second during that reaction. You can think about it as the speed of a reaction, but don't use that word. Use this word rate, because speed is uh, the distance moved uh, every second, according to physics. Now, anyway, so um, some reactions are very fast, which means they make lots of products each second. A good example of that is something like an explosion, like you can see happening. Uh, there. Some reactions are very slow, they only make very small amounts of product uh, each second. A good example of that is something like rust. You know, you don't see something rusting, it just rusts slowly over time. So that's a very slow chemical reaction. Now, we can chart these on a graph showing how the concentration of the products in a reaction changes over time. And what we find is we always get a curve that looks like this, where it starts off nice and steep and it gets gradually more and more shallow over time. Now on this graph the gradient that is the steepness shows us the rate of the reaction. So the gradient of the graph is steepest here therefore the reaction is fastest at the beginning. The gradient is shallowest over here so that means it is slowest. Now the gradient of a graph is the rise that's the distance it moves up divided by the run that's the distance it moves along. So we can actually calculate the gradient like this. If we draw what we call a, a, a tangent to the line like that, then we can measure on our graph paper how much it's gone up and how much it's gone along and divide one by the other and we will get the gradient. Okay, so collision theory. This is our big theory that explains why some reactions are faster and others are slower. Now, what this tells us is that in order to react, two particles must collide with each other and they must have enough energy when they collide. Now you can see here that often particles just bounce off each other rather than reacting. So the enough energy part means that particles must have what we call the activation energy. This is the minimum amount of energy that two particles need to have in order to react when they collide rather than just bouncing off. And you can see that here where these two particles, that big spark, uh, represents the way they have reacted when they collided rather than just bouncing off. Now, in order to increase the rate of reaction, we can increase the frequency of collisions. That means the number of collisions each second. We're not going to say the, the phrase number of collisions, just frequency. Um, and we can also increase the energy of the collisions because that will increase the proportion of successful collisions that meet the activation energy. And we can summarize those two with this key phrase that you're going to see a lot on this PowerPoint. Um, we talk about increasing the frequency of successful collisions. So let's see some of the different factors that affect this. Factor number one is changing the concentration. So by concentration, we're talking about the number of particles in a given volume. So for example, here, we've got a low concentration of red particles, and here we've got a higher concentration of red particles. Now, what we can say then is at higher concentration, there are more particles. So there is an increased frequency of successful collisions. And so the rate of reaction increases. And we can see that on this graph here, the solid line shows the lower concentration, whilst the dotted line shows the higher concentration and you can see the gradient on the um, higher concentration is steeper showing that faster rate. Okay so our next factor we're going to look at is changing the surface area. So let's imagine we've got one large lump of uh, solid uh, here. We can increase the surface area by breaking that large lump of solid into many uh, smaller pieces. So on the left we've got a lower surface area, one large lump and on the right, we've got a higher surface area for smaller lumps. Now, when we increase the surface area, that exposes more particles to reactants. Um, the particles in pink are the ones on the edge, and they're the only ones that are able to react. And on the left, we've only got 20 
particles they're exposed. Whereas on the right, when we've got four smaller pieces, we've got 32 particles that are exposed. So if we've got more exposed particles, there will be an increased frequency of successful collisions, which will increase the rate of the reaction. And again, that's what we see here. So the dotted line represents the higher surface area. The solid line represents the lowest surface area. And you can see the dotted line starts us off steeper because it's got a faster rate of reaction than the solid line. So what about changing the pressure uh, of a gas? Now, this top diagram here shows lower pressure and the bottom diagram shows higher pressure. Now, at higher pressure, the particles are closer together. You can see that here, you know, there's much less space in between the particles than there is on the lower pressure one. So if the particles are closer together, they are gonna collide more often. So there's an increased frequency of successful collisions. So the rate of the reaction will increase. And again, we can see that here, we've got the solid line representing the lower pressure, the dotted line representing the higher pressure. And you can see how that dotted line shows that faster rate because it's got a steeper gradient. Now, importantly, this only applies to reactions that involve gases. If we've got a reaction between liquids or solids, pressure won't make a difference. And the last one we're gonna look at is changing the temperature. So let's imagine we've got a colder reaction and we've got a hotter one, okay? Now, at the higher temperature, the particles are moving faster. This means two things. They both collide more often because they're moving around faster and also when they collide, they collide with more energy. So both of those things together mean that there is an increased frequency of successful collisions and so the rate of reaction increases and it is a very significant effect. It's more significant than the others um, and the reason why is because temperature is doing these two things. It's both increasing the frequency of collisions and the energy of the collisions, having this double effect, having a really big effect on the rate of reaction. Okay, so what about adding a catalyst to a reaction? Now, a catalyst is a substance that increases the rate of a reaction without being used up. What we mean by that is if we had five grams of catalyst at the start of the reaction, we'll still have five grams of it at the end because it doesn't get consumed. Now, these increase the rate of chemical reactions. We can see that here. So with a catalyst, the reaction is much faster than it is without the catalyst. Now, catalysts work by providing an alternative reaction pathway that has a lower activation energy. What do we mean by that? Well, let's, let's look at this. Um, so this might be our reaction pathway without a catalyst. The red and the blue, they collide with each other to make one uh, new molecule uh, over there. Now, with a catalyst, it might look something like this. So maybe the red particle reacts with the catalyst first to make sort of this intermediate there. And then that intermediate reacts with the blue particle to make our red and blue and to release or to regenerate the original catalyst. So the catalyst is, is actually unchanged by this process. Now, the important thing we find is that because these catalysts have a lower activation energy, um, that increases the frequency of successful collisions. It is not that there are more collisions, it is just that a greater proportion of those collisions are successful. Okay, so that's it, the end. As always, well done if you got this far, and thank you for listening.